Jason Gabori is an author and regional ministry director with InterVarsity Christian Fellowship. He is also an Anglican friar with the Anglican Order of Preachers. He has contributed to a number of books, including Drama Team Handbook, and recently published his own book entitled Wait With Me. He and his wife, Sophia, live in New York City with their two children. Jason, we're honored to have you, so thanks for taking some time. What, I'm what so made glad you, to be here with you. What made you want to write about this? Yeah, great question. There are really two answers to that. Uh, one is that loneliness has been a personal struggle for me for a long time. I, I can always remember my earliest memories uh, include times of feeling lonely and wrestling with loneliness. And uh, so I wanted to write about that uh, experience, particularly because something happened in my mid-30s that changed my life around loneliness. And I, I wanted to share what I'd learned with other people. So that was the personal story, uh-huh. but the the more uh, kind of global story is, I think we're in a loneliness epidemic right now. Dr. Mm. Vivek Murthy, who was the former Surgeon General of the United States of America, has said, uh, is, said that we're in a, he's the one who coined the phrase, we're in a loneliness epidemic. Oh, wow. uh, he sees it as a public health crisis. Mm-hmm. If you look at the research, the medical research out there, seven out of 10 young people, Generation Z, uh, say they feel lonely a good portion of the time. People who are facing retirement right now, 50% of them are lonely. Uh, if you look at people, men over 40, men, many of them experience loneliness. There's profound d- different categories that people find themselves in. But one common thing is that everybody experiences loneliness or many people are experiencing loneliness and it's, it is a, a, a real crisis. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things, is it Friar Hugo? Is that your mentor? Yes. Um, yes. You know, yep. he, he uh, said to you that to be human is to be lonely. Can you elaborate yeah. a little bit more on that? You've already done some, but just bring that out. Sure. Yeah. Uh, there's so many things I could say about that. But um, the thing I learned from Friar Hugo is that so many of us think if we're lonely, there's something wrong with us. Mm. Like I must be doing life wrong. Right. I must be. I must be bad at relationships. I must be bad at things. I, maybe I'm a little lower status than I think I might want to be. You know, all these different things go through our heads. And so loneliness is hard to talk about because we think if I'm lonely, there's something wrong with me. What Friar uh, Hugo did was he helped me to see loneliness is just a part of being human. Okay. Uh, you know, in the garden, if you look at if you look at Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, and as you well know, Genesis 1, there's all it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. God saw it was right. good and God saw it's good. And then you get to Genesis 2, and God sees that the man is alone, and he says, it's not good. And the problem, the ache of loneliness, was true in our species before the fall. Mm. And so just like we need sleep, just like we need food, just just like we need, you know, to breathe oxygen, we need to relate to other people. And the ache of desiring to connect with other people and having that space within us where our desires to connect with people and the reality of our actual connections don't line up. Mm -hmm. That was, that was true before the fall. So we're not just lonely because there's something wrong with us. We're lonely because we're human. And that was part of what really changed my perspective. Wow. And, and one of the things that that you kind of carry through the book is that um, loneliness isn't necessarily a bad thing because it, it can create opportunities and and uh, things for you and I. And so what are some of those benefits that, that we can experience? Yeah, uh, great question. So I think some of the benefits of loneliness is if it if it brings us if, if it brings us into our relationship with God in fresh ways. So mm. part of the thing that happened in my 30s that I wanted to share with people is I discovered that I could go into scripture and I could identify with the stories of women and men in scripture who'd had periods of isolation and loneliness and disconnection. And they were times that God met them deeply and formed them into the people that he was creating them to be. And what that did was it it helped me to see if this is true of Hagar, if this is true of Elijah, if this is true of Ruth, if this is true of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, if this is true of Mary, the mother of Jesus, this is true of Paul, 
it can be true of me too. Right. And then I could create, begin to create space to hope God, I'm not just alone and isolated. God is doing something in me, just like he's done all throughout biblical history uh, to, to form me into his, into relationship with him. And so that was one thing. The other thing that I, I discovered was that uh, I could learn to be, to grow compassion, not only for myself, but for other people. Mm. Cause I'm not the only one who's experienced loneliness. There's right. a lot of people, seven out of 10 young people are lonely. And, and so if I can, if I can work through that for myself, I can have more compassion for other people. And then thirdly, I'd never noticed it before, but in the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus is abandoned by everyone hmm. up from the garden to the, his cry of des, uh, desolation. Jesus experienced more profound loneliness than you or I will ever experience. Mm. And what if my experiences of loneliness actually help me know God, know Jesus in his suffering uh, more deeply than I ever considered before? So those three things, I think, were of enormous benefit. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, that's great. You know, one of the things that Fryer said to you was he invited you to love Jesus for Jesus' sake and not your own. Yes. Talk to us a little bit about that, because that's pretty powerful. Yes. Well, because so much of my life has, was about Jesus relating with me in my struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and maybe your church doesn't know this hymn, but most churches do. You know the old hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus? Absolutely. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. That beautiful hymn, I love that hymn, I sing that hymn, but uh, but think about a relationship that's like that. Mm. What do you call a relationship that's one-sided, where you bring all of your grief, all of your pain, all of your frustration, and you just drop it on that other person, and you never stop for a minute, and you say, well, what are your griefs? Mm. What are your concerns? Mm. What, are your what are your challenges? And so what I learned was by spending time in Scripture really reflecting deeply on Jesus's experience of loneliness and isolation, I realized that I could, I realized the depth of Jesus's experience far superseded mine. Mm. And I began to view my loneliness in light of how it could help me relate to Jesus, empathize with Jesus. You know, oh my gosh, Jesus, I've been through really difficult things in my life, but nothing like this. Right. You know, I've been rejected before, but nothing like this. And that sense of compassion and empathy for Jesus helped me to say, warmed my heart to, to love and appreciate Jesus for what he is, for who he is, for how he has loved us and engaged with us. And so that has profoundly shifted how I pray, it's profoundly shifted how I study scripture, it's profoundly shifted how I relate to Jesus and Jesus' people. That's good, that's good. So for that person right now, who is experiencing loneliness, uh, what would you say to them? Because yep. there's a lot of people who's going to hear this and uh, yep. they're probably saying, you know what, I'm lonely right now. Yeah. I'd say a couple things. One, if you're lonely, there's nothing wrong with you. It mm. means you're if you're lonely, it's not because you're low status. It's not because you, you're doing relationships wrong. It's not because you're unlovable or unlikable. If you're feeling lonely right now, it's because you're created in the image of God and God loves you and he sees you and he knows you. And, uh, and that ache that you have in your heart is, is something that God can meet you in the middle of. Mm. And the second thing I would say is that uh, the very loneliness you, you feel is an opportunity for you to connect with other people because the loneliness is a part of the human condition. It's true of more people than you think. Some people who have the best, uh, the best Instagram feeds, the best you know, social media presence look great on the outside, but inside they're desperately lonely. Yeah. Uh, third thing is, uh, if you're lonely, it doesn't mean you have a bad marriage or a bad family or a bad job or bad coworkers, uh, because part of the trick of loneliness is that um, we need different kinds of relationships to feel whole. 
And so you can have a great marriage mm -hmm. and love your spouse well, and you can still feel lonely because the kind of relationships you're hungry for are peer relationships. Oh, wow. This happens a lot of times with young married couples. I don't know if you have young married couples yeah. in their church, but a lot of times young married couples, they think I'm going to get married and it's going to solve, I'm not going to be feel lonely anymore. Right. And then they spend a couple of, you know, year, first year, couple of years together. And they, they think I, I still feel lonely. I must have married the wrong person. And you think, no, you didn't marry the wrong person. You're hungry for, you're hungry for, to, to spend time with other women, or you're hungry to spend time with other men and yeah. to, to have peers again, or, uh, you know, or you're hungry for a mentor or you're hungry for a different kind of relationship. So, um, so I'd say, uh, you know, there's no, there's nothing wrong with you that uh you, you know you can meet god in the context of your loneliness you can have compassion for other people in the context of your loneliness and uh and that loneliness anybody can be lonely right. whether you're surrounded by a lot of people or you're you're living by yourself and and so what would you say to the person who maybe is saying to themselves i don't really ever experience loneliness you know yeah. Does that person have a responsibility? You know, is there something that uh, they can do uh, with the people around them? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. I love that question. Uh, a couple answers, a couple thoughts to that is uh, some people are lonely uh, and they don't know it. Oh, wow. Um, and, and so some of the hints that you might be lonely include stress, uh, include lots of anxiety about work and mm. performance. Because sometimes our stress about got to make sure it's right, got to make sure it's good, got to make sure I'm performing at work is actually, please notice me, please notice me, please notice me. It's actually a sign of loneliness. It's not, so I think, you know, it's not workaholism. It's, it's a desire to be seen, huh. loved, and known. Uh, sometimes uh, depression uh, is also, it could be connected to loneliness. Uh, also places of, uh, some, if you have trouble controlling your temper, uh, sometimes not saying that all of these problems are exclusively loneliness right. connected, but um, but there's something about our species <laughs> that we, if you're highly stressed and you have some of these signs of stress, uh, there's something about our species that just the presence of a, of one other person that is with you that is pre that is present to you that that sees, knows, and cares about you, and you feel that actually brings your stress levels down. So wow. if you're somebody who has those things, which you say, but I'm not lonely, I'd say loneliness doesn't travel alone. Look for some other, look for some other symptoms, and you might actually have a, a, you may actually be experiencing loneliness you don't know about. Now, for the people who are like, I'm relationally full. Yeah. I, I've got a great life, and I'm just connected to people. I think you're on to something where you say, uh, that gift, whether it's a gift of personality or context, God has given you for the purpose of reaching out to and including other people in into the community. And so, uh, I think one of the I think that's an incredible gift, and it needs to be stewarded well. Great. So let me let me close with this right here. You know what what would be the the core message that you would want to let everyone know about loneliness and how we should approach it and uh, embrace it and, and grow from it. Yeah. Core message is anybody can be lonely and most of us are. Uh, and that loneliness is a context to develop life with God, a friendship with God. And uh, in, if we look to, if we look into scripture, and this is, this is a major theme in the book is taking people into from loneliness into scripture to meet god in the pages of scripture and wrestle with god in the pages of scripture not reading for information mm. uh it's not a bible study where you're reading to learn more right it's it's not reading just to know jesus loves me this i know for the bible tells me so it's reading imaginatively really putting ourselves into the pages of scripture and learn and trying to imagine what is this like what's this person in the bible experiencing if we can do that, what will happen is God will increase our ability to be, feel connected to him. Mm. God will increase our ability to understand ourselves, what's going on with us, and our, even our own loneliness. And God will increase our compassion, not only for him, but for other people as well.
Great. Well, Jason, thank you so much for writing this. I, I know that that it's going to help a lot of us because, as you say, you know, to be human is to be lonely, and we struggle with it. And you shared some perspectives that I've never thought of. So thank you so much for the gift of your writing and your book. Oh, I'm so glad that you're using it, and I hope I hope that God blesses your efforts. Thanks.